To make your own pilgrimage, you need to make a magical journey to the constellation of Libra. Friend, I would like you to enter into this state of peace. And as you do so, we hear the priestess speaking. We are ready now to project ourselves into the etheric temple of the zodiac. See before you a hill crowned with a gleaming temple, surrounded by myriads of stars. Visualize it. Heaven is always around us, even on earth. The stars surround us, even in the daytime, when we are focused on our little world, illumined by one star, our sun. At night, we are surrounded by the cosmos, our galaxy and others. It is only at dawn and dusk, as at this time of Libra and the vernal equinox, that we are aware of both worlds at the same time. The heaven world, which only sends little glimmerings of it through dreams and our earthly hard day. This is the time of the great awakening, the soul and spirit awakening. We are entering a new aeon, an aeon of the goddess with her consort the god, but the goddess always presides over a new awakening, a rebirth, for he comes through the goddess into an age where man and woman, men and women are together as companions. The priestess tells us to climb up, each are on our own way. How honored we are to be climbing the hill towards the temple of the zodiac. As we gaze at the stars wheeling around us, we realize that each star is the home of divine intelligences and even mightier beings and deities who preside over whole galaxies. It is beyond our believing. Yet each of us has a spark of star within us for we belong to the body of the Cosmic Mother. On we climb up the hill and we reflect that as each star is haven of deities, bright beings we may become, yet there are also planets encircling which are planetary schools for us as is our Earth. Within the cosmic body of the goddess of the stars. Before was the age of the earth, the earth goddess, then the age of the sun god, and we focused upon success. But now we enter the cosmic age of space, which sparkles with a myriad suns. We are mounting a hill towards the temple of the zodiac. Priestess speaks, friend, we face the southwest portal of the temple. It is flanked by mighty winged sphinxes. Visualize this. They are half women, half lions, and their wings extend to the roof of this temple which cannot really be described as white because it is filled with shifting colors of a rainbow emanating from great soaring windows, which we guess number 12. There is a glimmering dome above the temple, but we feel it is an aura rather than a roof. There is a stream. The hill is not entirely crowned by a temple. No hill should be. The crown of the temple is pure and innocent of any building, but it has a spring, and this spring is running towards us, and then under a conduit it enters the temple. We follow this procession now, past the sphinxes, and we enter. How glorious is this myriad-colored temple! This is place of our longing, our dreams.
where all love and wisdom may be found. In the center is a perpetual light shining on an altar. This perpetual light shines upon us. Come to the west window, surrounded by the seventh sign, Libra, the scales of equal day and night, autumn and spring. So we are facing the western window of Libra. Let us be seated and gaze upon it. Try and visualize this. I'm sure you can see it. The picture shows a goddess beneath an aspen tree cradling the yin-yang egg. The yin-yang sign, as you probably know, sign of Chinese, the perfect balance rather than the scales that we have in Egypt and in other Western lands. Think of a goddess cradling it. And we realize this is a sign also of sperm and ovum a created being perfect balance between father and mother the concert of the goddess encircles her with his arms below we read the ancient words the aspen will detain the egg will all explain seek not yourself be sought all other search is vain Think of this. What does it mean? It's very ancient words, these. The aspen will detain, the egg will all explain. Seek not, see what we were seeking, yourself be sought. All other search is vain. So we have to be sought out. Hmm. The third priest addresses the apprentice. Are you willing to enter Sehan, astral paradise of immortality? There you may partake of celestial peaches bestowed by the goddess Kuan Yin and her consort. But beware, these peaches may bring sleep and you may lose your strength. Your immortality then will be but a dream. Apprentice, I am willing to face the test. I wish to live forever. Third priestess. A mighty wind rushes through the temple, throwing open the window. Feel this wind falling through. We see through it the glittering constellation of Libra with its 28 stars. The star Sihan forms the southwestern pan of the scales. Approach the window. You need to cross the stream that flows round the temple. Ah, now we see that the stream that pours out of the crown of the hill has entered through the south gateway and flows round, Dacial, round the temple, from left to right. Look at the constellation of Libra. And this is a special star, Sea Han, is a southwestern pan. She says, approach the window. Now, let us cross the stream. There is this stream with a little bridge over it, leading to the open window. She says to the apprentice, we follow you. Now we all cross the bridge and enter into an entirely other landscape of soft beauty. And we hear the priestess reciting. Limpid as a river, pure as the sea, the mother goddess is face. I want to give you dyed willow, perfumed plum. Here I shall sit with you while you grow immortal. Let us follow the apprentice into this happy land of the goddess Kuan Yin, full of all we have ever longed for, land of our heart's longing. Beautiful, lovely, 
Think of where you most wish to be. Who you would most wish to meet. What time you would be in. And be joyful. Here time rings no bells. We have all the time in the universe. Or rather all the time we need and want. Here we have all the place we want. Trees, hills, mountains, groves, streams, infinite space, or all we wish of it. Here we have the company of those we love forever or as long as we choose. We make our own space and time in infinity. Here grow the peaches of immortality. Taste them if you can find them. Those who have tasted these speeches may ever return if they have the will to do so. Then we are called back. We come back to the temple or rather just outside the temple. The third priest speaks to the apprentice. Did you find what you sought? Apprentice. Ah, what bliss! I have tasted the peaches of immortality. I know that love and joy are eternal. Third priest, you have passed the first test. Yes, the test is twofold with curious balance. The test is first, can you enjoy the peaches of love and bliss. Then come away from them. Second priestess speaks. You now face a very different spiritual paradise. Is she of the valley of light? We now face two stars in another direction. One yellow and the other grey. The goddess Siho, astronomer empress and mother of the ten sons, is ruler with her consort. Here you learn to discriminate between good and evil and to have the courage to act on your own choice. This is in the opposite pan of the scales from the peaches paradise. The dragon mother and her daughter said to the dragon king, in our treasury is the magic iron with which the bed of the Milky Way was compounded. It is glowing with a strange light. Is this not an omen that we should give it to the sage? This monkey king who has just arrived, second priest or apprentice, are you willing to face the goddess Siho? Will she give you the magical power she bestowed on the monkey pilgrim? There is a danger that you may misuse it, and so it will destroy you. The apprentice here thinks gravely, which we think is wise. Is she fit to receive magical power? Apprentice, I am willing to face the ordeal to achieve power. Second priestess, so be it. Let us now enter into this paradise. We approach this land with one yellow star and one a greyish light. Here there are craggy mountains and precipices and hermitages. There are many holy hermits who dwell here, for here are those who meditate in an austere way that they may discover truth. Come, let us enter into this land. It seems craggy and hard at first, but 
we find our own place where we may learn truth. For life without truth may be a constant delusion, leading to stagnation, decay. Let us follow then the stars and find our own ashram, Iseum, meditation seat, seat of wisdom. Yes, as play we must know things. It's no good sitting being happy if we don't know why there's such sorrow, such cruelty, such evil, not only in the earth, but possibly in other places in the universe. Why does evil exist? What are we to do to help? We want to know, too, how to create so that we're not always on the receiving end of what happens in the world, that we may learn to take responsibility, to make things, to write, not just to read other people's work, to paint, not just to look at other people's pictures, to rule and not always be ruled. We are called back. Come. The second priest addresses the apprentice, rather seriously this time, not with a smiling face. What have you experienced, apprentice? I have learned something. I've learned to take responsibility for my actions and not to blame others. Sounds easy, but nowadays we're always taught uh, to blame our parents or upbringing or social surroundings or something like that. But I've learned something of the laws of cause and effect of karma. I, I'm longing to come back and learn more. Second priestess, you found the joy of learning as well as of enjoying yourself. You have passed the second test. First priest, we now face the green northern star of balance, Zuban, between the two pans. Over this divine paradise of harmony, dwells the goddess Nukua and her consort, the god Fusi. The river of heaven wheels round at night. The goddess rolls up her blinds. Dawn at the northern casement with ribbons of powdery dawn cloud and sky skirt of lotus root silk. She walks over the I'm as a drunkard, staggering across the road of life between emotion and mind and everything else. I will enter. Let us enter the paradise of new cure, of perfect harmony, of the opposites. Here all are reconciled, love and truth, philosophy and religion, peace and activity. Above all, we find harmony within ourselves and with others. Here is harmony with all nature. Judgment is not judging others. It is having the judgment to bring harmony so there's no loss to any. Peace can only come with justice. Let us do justice to ourselves, and so we will be just to all. And so the law of love and harmony prevails. We also have the joy of understanding the truth, so we can determine how long to enjoy ourselves and be happy, and how long and when we wish to study and learn when we may rest and when we may run, when we may fly. We realize we can only fly with two wings. To sit is to be immobile and balanced. To fly is also to be in balance. Let us fly. 
and rest and fly again. Thus are we infinitely various. As we swing from left to right, to high to low, to great to small, to laughter to tears, to the antics of the ape within us, to the austerity of the hermit. Thus, in harmony with ourselves, we are part of the cosmos and the music of the spheres. We are called back. Possibly we can even reconcile heaven and earth. First priest to the apprentice, what has happened to you? Apprentice meditates a bit while you meditate too. What has happened to us? Then the apprentice speaks. At last, I feel truly myself. I have gained inner polarity, so I won't have to depend on other people, so I'll be able to give and take more easily. I'll be able to be alone, and yet with others. First priestess, yes, you have passed the third test. Your spirit has won its wings. It is now time for us to meditate on all we have learned as we face the constellation of Libra, the paradise of joy and peace and rest, the paradise of striving and learning, and that which balances both. First priest, nonetheless, we must return. Let us enter the temple of the zodiac by the window of Libra. We reassemble, and as we look at the window, a wind rushes by and closes it. And once more we see the goddess cradling the egg of yin-yang, embraced by her consort, and we understand its meaning. We leave by the Sphinx portal and descend the hill. We're accompanied this time by the tumbling stream which comes out of the temple, having gone round it as we have. We think it represents our souls. Come down the hill. We feel glowing within, bright light on our brows, a glow in our bodies. We feel that our spirit and body is in harmony through our psyche, our souls. But we don't belong here. We begin to rise into the air and we watch the priestly procession wind its way back to the temple of Isis. Bring with you now the harmony you have felt. Return to your own time and place. You are now back in your own body feeling better than you did before.